right, welcome back to Real Agriculture and Real Ag Radio. Joining me now is Pam Tarakinin. She's the CEO of the Manitoba Crop Alliance. Pam, welcome here. Thank you for having me. All right, now, uh, so exciting times over at the Manitoba Crop Alliance, but let's catch everybody up in case they're not aware who or what is your organization. The Manitoba Crop Alliance, uh, coming up to four years of operation, Obviously, we were formed from an amalgamation of our five founding organizations, and we represent wheat, both spring and winter, barley, sunflowers, corn, and flax. There we go. I think I listed them out of order than I normally did, so I confused myself almost there. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so five crop types, and uh, yeah, coming up to four years of operation on August 1st. So yeah, it's kind of hard to believe it's been four years already. It, it has gone very quickly as someone I can only imagine for you, but as someone sort of on the outside, um, you know, the amalgamation discussion was was a long one. And, yeah. you know, it I, I think it worked well, it moved forward, but these things do take time. Um, and but yeah, and then in the blink of an eye, here we are four years of these four, these five groups coming together to form one organization. Now, you've when that amalgamation happened, there was, of course, sort of an initial strategic plan, a vision for what this amalgamation would look like in, in the beginning stages. As you move forward, of course, it's time for sort of a new look at the next chunk of time of where this organization is going to go. And you've launched that strategic vision, that strategic plan. Tell me a bit about that process of getting there, of putting this plan together. What did that look like? Yeah, it's, it's actually been a really great process. Um, and you summed it up quite nicely with respect to, you know, when we amalgamated, uh, we did have kind of our first strategic plan. And the consultant we worked with actually pointed out to us, like, you, um, and it was it was for deliberately, and I don't know if we did it deliberately, but it actually happened where we used the word continue a lot um, in our first strategic plan. And I think it was more of a reflection of just making sure that the farmer members um, that we were reassuring them that we were going to continue to do the things that we said we were going to do mm -hmm. throughout the consultation and leading up to the amalgamation. Um, you guys gave us the go ahead as farmer members. You know what? We're still going to focus on research and production, market development and access, uh, strong communications, um, and of course, a strong, you know, a strong um, entity as well in terms of a gov governance and a strong foundation. So. You know, there was a lot of continues um, within that first strategic plan, and and that was great. Um, and I think it provided us that solid base to kind of get our feet underneath ourselves. Um, and not only that, but this all happened during a global pandemic. So our members voted in February of 2020, and literally wow. like a month later, uh, the world changed slightly. Um, and we all went into lockdown and those types of things. And uh, in hindsight, it actually allowed us to really, um, you know, get a strong foundation in terms of policies and procedures and, you know, those types of things that we, we might not have had time to do, um, but did have time because everybody was uh, was doing their thing in terms of, uh, you know, isolating and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. So I think it was really um, an opportune time for us to really lead that, um, you know, lead us into where we needed to be. We're here now, four years in, and we realized, you know what, now it's really time for us to like, what's going to move the needle? What's going to take us, you know, take our farmer members to the next level? Like what value, additional value can we provide to them? Mm -hmm. And that's really where these discussions started in terms of what does our next three years look like as Manitoba Crop Alliance? And so in February of this year, of 2024, all of our delegates from all of our crop committees got together in Brandon and we had a session with our consultant. And we kind of really, you know, did, did a bunch of exercises as you normally do when you're going through a strategic planning session. And that laid a really solid foundation. And then in March, our board of directors uh, got together for another day and a half session, took all of that insight, all of that knowledge from all of our crop delegates to say, okay, now what does it look like? What does our strategic plan look like? And resulting from that is the document that we shared with our farmer members and industry as well. Um, in our May Heads Up e-newsletter saying, here's our three big goals that we really want to achieve over the next three years. And here's, uh, you know, step goals under each of those goals in terms of the things that we want to do under each of them to really accomplish that big goal. Um, so it's, you know, clear, concise, um, really high level. And we understand that as strategic plans often are. But I think it kind of gives, hopefully, our farmer members a vision as to we really want to take things uh, to the next level. Um, 
all while, like I said, uh, bringing additional value to them as our partner members. So, and this is one thing that I think uh, for anyone who's seen it, and you can head on over to uh, the Manitoba Crop Alliance website or realagriculture.com as well. We'll have it there as well. You've distilled it down to a one page PDF. It's got three big goals across the top. And then, as you mentioned, you've got sort of those sort of stepping stones underneath. Was yeah. it was it very much a conscious choice to stay that streamlined? Because you, you're five groups into one. And now it's right. And now it's doing big stuff outwards. Um, so really focusing on three key things. We will talk about what each of them are, but I, you know, from that perspective of how important was it or how deliberate was it to stay that focused? It was very deliberate. Um, you know, I, you know, we can always be ambitious as ambitious as we want. We could have had ten big goals. We could have done a whole bunch of other things. But you know, we're talking about a three-year time span. Um, and Obviously, we just earlier talked about like how fast four years went. Um, so three years is is a long period of time, but really not long period of time. And it's like, really, what can we do in this time period? What's achievable? Uh, what metrics can we assign to them so that, you know, after three years, we can say, here's where we are. Here's what we've accomplished. And then bite off the next chunk of time in terms of. Uh, so it was very deliberate to have that one pager easy to reference, easy to look at and say, here's our, here's our vision that we're headed towards over the next three years. Mm -hmm. Now, okay, so we're going to touch on the three of them just briefly. I want to start though with number two, um, is discover and, and discover and fund groundbreaking research. I love that you've actually articulated, not just research, groundbreaking. So what, what might that look like? Do you already have ideas of, of where you're going to focus those research dollars? We have some ideas for sure, definitely. Um, you know, and I think obviously as an organization that is very um, research, we want to be seen as leaders in research. Um, and you look at our budget, um, you know, 65% of our annual budget every year goes towards research and production. That is a major reason as to why Manitoba Crop Alliance exists, is to fund research, uh, to fund variety development, to really find solutions for those challenges and uh, problems that farmers are facing. So. It was logical that research was going to be one of our big goals because that is just why why we're here um, in the first place. Um, but we really wanted to take a look at, you know, we've got a really great program established. You know, we do uh, we have we work really collaboratively with other organizations, both within our province and outside of our province. Um, you know, we we uh, you know we have those great relationships. But like, what can we do next? Like, what capacity can we build here in Manitoba? to really like lead us forward, just not as a province, but, you know, to support our farmer members. And we look at some of the crop types that we have, um, you know, the smaller acreage crops like sunflowers and flax, um, you know, like how can we provide support to those crop types, you know, that actually aren't largely grown outside of our province. Mm -hmm. um, you look at sunflowers, majority of it's grown here in the province. Yeah. Um, you look at flax, you know, obviously our neighbors to the west and sas flax, they're, they're big partners of ours. Um, but you look elsewhere, there's not that capacity. And so then when you don't have that capacity, it's hard to get the research done that you're wanting to get done um, in those crop types. So how can we start to make some investments um, and fund some of that groundbreaking work that we want to do in these crop types that, that deserve it um, in a space where, you know, per perhaps there's not that capacity at this point. So I think those are kind of the things that we're really looking at in that kind of bigger goal is how can we start, you know, really making those investments and in, in capacity within our province. Mm -hmm. Now, your third goal or third stated goal uh, is to explore areas for bold investment that unlocks hidden potential and fuels historic progress. So so building on that, and I can see where it does, um, there's, you know, in the step goals, there's a lot of focus on the, the value add, on where, you know, you may see uh, some advancement for these crop types within the province um how how key was this one in these discussions that that farmers brought up about adding value to to their crops within manitoba borders well i think we we see that obviously um and there's often lots of discussion about you know the value added piece how can we just not produce the great raw product that we do and our farmers are great at it they produce high quality um, grains that are used domestically um, are exported to end use customers around the world. Um, so, you know, what other value added opportunities could there be? And I think it's also just a, a reflection of, you know, and to be honest with ourselves, what are the opportunities? Because we often talk about value added, 
um, you know, how can we get these, you know, processing facilities or those, but at least, but we need to also be honest with ourselves in terms of, is there a fit? If not, that's fine, but let's move on from that discussion then, uh, or if there is opportunities, what needs to be done? And perhaps that will also then funnel into our research program. It's like, there are opportunities, but guess what? We need to fund this piece or solve the issues here that our research program then can step in and say, here we go. Here's what, here's a problem that we can solve in order to take advantage of that opportunity. So I think when you start to look at some of these, you know, step goals, they all kind of start to tie in together with each other at some point or potentially at some point. Mm -hmm. And then the first, but we'll, we'll end on this one um, is, is really ramping up that communication piece and learning about how your farmers want to learn about these things, how your organization can communicate as a, you know, this one's near and dear to my heart, but it's one of those ones that I think a lot of producer groups really struggle with, you know, you do all this work, but it's really important that your farmer members know what's happening or, you know, stay up to date and all those sorts of things. So, so what might this look like going forward as far as that communications piece? Yeah. And I think this was, and, you know, and perhaps potentially maybe that's, there was no rhyme or reason as to which one was big goal one, two, or three. It just happened to be how the workshop worked. Um, but obviously we recognize and the farmers sitting around the table were like, we have 7,700 farmer members. Um, and we can guarantee you, not every single one of those farmer members even knows who Magical Crop Alliance is. So there's a wide breadth of knowledge as to who we are and what we do. Um, and we think we've you know, we've also made changes already to our communications program and trying to reach out to them in different ways, either through social media. We have like three um, publications that are like directly mailed to them. Um, you know, we have field days. We have uh, sp very specific events where they can come see us in person. We hold Crop Connect, like with our partner organizations. We we see these all these opportunities, and um, it's like how do but how do we learn how our farmers want to engage with us what do they want you know how can we deliver on that um, because we can fund all this great research um, but if the results aren't getting into the hands of our farmer members to utilize on their farms we're really missing like a critical piece in in that so how do we um you know innovate our our program to make sure we're reaching more of them reaching more of our farmers um, and i think working through each of the step goals i think that will become clear. Um, we're not trying to figure out what it is right now. It's we're going to work through a process and hopefully at the end of the first year, we'll have like a, our ha ha moment, <laughs> hopefully. Um, but, um, you know, we're, we're dealing with, uh, with farmers who are very busy um, and our tensions are being pulled in multiple directions. So how do we, how do we get in there? How do we make sure that they know what we're doing? So. Yep. All right. Okay. Pam, thank you so much for joining me uh, on the show today. This is fantastic. Um, and Manitoba, what's the website that uh, people can find the Manitoba Crop Alliance um, so that if somebody wants to take a look at the strategic plan, they may. Yeah, no, it's definitely on our website. Uh, just click, you'll find it easily. We, uh, and if you haven't sign up for our heads up e-newsletter as well, you'll get it directly to your inbox second Wednesday of uh, every month. So uh, that's go. one way to keep in tune in terms of what we're doing. So. Right. That communications piece is so important. All yeah. right, Pam, <laughs> thanks so much. Sorry, shameless plug. Yeah, it's totally allowed. <laughs> That's totally cool. There you go.